All right. How is everyone doing today? <laughs> What's the time there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, first of all, okay, it's evening in Nairobi. Well, uh, thank you very much, guys. I really, like, I was dying inside that I did not manage to come and attend this meeting. So, it really, like, I had like very like negative feelings, but now I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, so here I am, and uh, I would like to share about my uh, the my project that I wanted to share at the conference. So uh, my name is Bonfas Betty. My middle name is Jerez, and uh, I I come into peace building world from uh, a background of having been an artist peace builder. So I have been an artist, performing artist theater maker. And then I began to use the arts as a language for peace building uh, with grassroots communities in Kenya. And I started to work with an organization called Amani People's Theater. Amani People's Theater is basically a, a, a grassroots organization uh, that was founded by stu volunteer students in Nairobi. Uh, to work on transforming uh, uh, violent, uh, violent conflict in a constructive way, using the arts as the language for engaging grassroots communities. And uh, so I combined, Amani taught me, and I worked with Amani for many years, to combine storytelling, which resonates very well with African uh, uh, mediative elements and cultural uh, realities, but also use of different types of theater. So I have used theater in uh, different modes of theater. So one of the theater, forms of theater I've used is called forum theater, where communities uh, discuss issues or conflict uh, using uh, theater, and then invites the audience to come and propose alternative solutions to transforming conflict or, uh, or uh, alternative ways of resolving the conflict. And uh, so I have used forum theater, but I've also used, with Amani, we have also used for many years, and I've been a facilitator and trainer with Amani for many years. We have used something called theater of the oppressed. I know many people in the world know that theater of the oppressed was founded by Augusto Boal, Brazilian legislator, legislator and also an activist. And he, he created Theater of the Oppressed, the works of uh, Paulo Freire, you know, from Pedagogy of the Oppressed, and then he created Theater of the Oppressed. So we have used these uh, kinds of theater we, to deal with issues of gender-based violence and also ethnic conflicts. And so uh, some years back in 2012, I went to Canada. I was invited as a, a storyteller at the University of Manitoba. Uh, the University of Manitoba, there is a peace building uh, program that is hosted uh, at a place called St. Paul's College. I went there uh, in the International Storytelling Festival. And when I was there, I told stories about peace and transforming uh, conflict. And then later, in 2015, I went back to do my master's degree there uh, in International Peace and Conflict Studies which I just finished and completed. While I was there, I did this project. I started this project in Winnipeg, Canada, and Nairobi. Uh, but I spent time with a group of refugee youths in Winnipeg, uh, mostly coming from Burundi and uh, Somalia. And they spoke Swahili, but they also spoke English. And I worked with them with the Museum for Human Rights, which is in Winnipeg, because my story for working with communities using theater is featured at the Museum for Human Rights. So this museum sponsored me to do three workshops uh, in their space with newcomer refugee youth. And it was about stories of home, ways of uh, looking at their experiences as newcomer youth, young people in a foreign country, in a new culture, and stories, share stories with uh, host communities. Uh, Playback Theatre was founded by Joe Salas and jo Jonathan Fox uh, in Hudson River in New York. 
and basically is a, a, a troupe of actors performing improv of stories from an audience. So they ask audiences, how are you feeling today? And then the audience will say, someone in the audience will say how they are feeling, and then a troupe of actors will perform that story through improvisation without plan on the stage. So I started to do this kind of theater with these young men. I, I started to do three workshops of training at the Museum for Human Rights. And the final, the final day, which the museum provided for us space, was to do a show. So we did a show and invited around 50 host members, our community members, who are like people living in Winnipeg. And the stories of home were performed by a troop of refugee youth actors on the stage. And so they asked the audience, who are mostly host members and some refugee and newcomers in the community, uh, in the audience, about how they're feeling, but also we, playback theater can also give you ability to perform long stories. And the stories were mainly, have you ever left your home and gone to another place, whether a new country or a new, you moved from one house to another. So this is what we did, so that the stories were inclusive, so that we don't reify refugee experience and put it here and then have the, the, the hosts, uh, the host communities on one hand, but create a container of experiences and stories by both refugees and newcomers, as well as the hosts, because the hosts also share their stories and they say they move from Edmonton to Winnipeg or from Winnipeg to British Columbia or from British Columbia to uh, Saskatchewan. So there was this kind of experiences and sharing of stories. And so that was the part, the first part of sharing stories. But it did not end there. After the performance where we had like 50 community members, these young people could not separate. So we worked with a local organization in Winnipeg called Need Center. It's Newcomer Employment and Education Center. So the young people asked me, they said, we did this performance and we have this created uh, theater troupe, but we, we cannot just stop here. So they created this as a permanent theater troupe visiting different places in Winnipeg and being invited to help different community groups tell stories and they play those stories on the stage and then it became a theater company. So uh, it became a theater company. So when you invite them, then they charge you. You pay, you pay money and then uh, they are able to perform and do your work and heal the community, but also uh, get some form of livelihood by doing their performances. And the process I continue to support them to find ways in which people could train them, like experienced trainers and theater groups, like Manitoba Young People's Theater professionals, training them in specific uh, artistic, artistic, uh, like imparting in them artistic skills as ways of giving them uh, like a profession in performing and then so that they can be able to bargain with local companies, local police in Winnipeg, where they have performed stories even on gender, uh, gender and relation between police and community and newcomer groups using playback theater. So this company, theater company, it's still ongoing, it's still going on in Winnipeg. And at the same time, I also went, yeah, pardon? Oh, three minutes left? Yeah, so, how um, many Okay, so basically, I think I'm done, basically. So, uh, the main thing is that, so I created a theater company, and then out of this, together with the newcomer youth and refugees, basically. But we began as a community project, building project using playback theater. So basically, that is what my project is all about.